find the Fiddy app on the Play Store and can access these courses, the resources, and webinars through your phone. So download our app and stay connected to teaching and learning on the go. I hope the video helped us understand the features of Firki website well. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mansi, you're on mute. We are unable to hear you. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope the video helped us understand the features of the Firki website. We also have an, a Firki app that you can access through your phone, link to which I have placed in the chat window. With that, let's move on to the webinar at hand today. Thank you for taking the time to join us in the discussion. In designing this and other webinars throughout the year, we are hoping to disseminate our meaningful knowledge and skills that take us closer to our goal of improving the quality of education in Indian classrooms. In this webinar, participants will explore and experience uh, the importance of social, emotional and sustainable sustainability learning complexities of developing such courses and the problems Project Rangeet solves, curriculum and how it is delivered, enabling and empowering everyone to be a better teacher of critical 21 century skills. And I'll now introduce the speakers for today. Karishma Menon is the founder, curriculum, founder, curriculum and product. G grateful, she designs her product, uh, she designs a product that will help children around the world believe they matter. Priyanka Seth Pandit is the founder of curriculum and teacher training. Uh, a teacher, a trained teacher with 25 years experience in the US and India. Karish, Karishma believes passion, compassion is everything. Simran Mulchandani is the founder brand strategy and business development. Ex JP Morgan banker. Simran hopes has the courage to live the life they dream. We also have Ra Rakibul Islam joining us. He is the policy advisor for Bangladesh and West Bengal schools and education advisor, government of Bangladesh, and is now helping Project Rangeet expand its footprints. That brings us to the norms for the webinar today. Given that we are expecting a large number of audience, please keep your video and mic off to reduce stress on the bandwidth. Unmute it only when our speaker asks you to do so. You can keep typing your questions during the uh, in the chat box during the session. The presenters will try and address as many questions as possible through the webinar. I will be here to curate all your questions and comments. Do remember that learning new things is difficult. Uh, so do what works for you. Uh, take notes, talk to other people. Um, it's The webinar will be recorded and will be available on YouTube and Filky website soon. We also have Anu from my team who will be taking down notes for the session, a summary of which will be made available along with the recording and other resources of the webinar. This brings me to the end of my introduction. Before we go ahead with the webinar at hand today, we are going to start with a quick small opening activity. We will all switch on our mics for 30 seconds and say hello in our mother tongue to the speakers and other presenters in the call. After this, Prerna from my team will put Okay, for 30 seconds, we'll all say in our mother tongue. Okay. Namaskar. 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 Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you have an interesting evening. Over to our speakers now. Um. Someone has, yeah, someone needs to mute. So we know I'm unable to hear you if you muted yourself. I unmuted myself. Okay, we'll try one more time. <laughs> Greetings from Bombay and thank you so much for joining us. 
a special thank you to the Firki team for giving us this wonderful platform to present Project Rangit today. These have undoubtedly been difficult times for many, and we hope everyone's doing as well as possible. But thank you for taking the time out today to hear us. My colleagues, Priyanka and Karishma are here with me in Bombay, and Rakib is joining us from Dhaka. We're really excited to take you on an interactive journey to learn more about Project Jungle. One thing, we were very happy to receive many insightful questions from all of you. And we've done our best to answer as many as possible of these during the course of our webinar, and we'll be flagging them as we go along. So it will get a little more interactive and your name might get called out. So we're good to go. Let's all have fun. Karishma, over to you. Um, Simran, if you can hear me, yes. Sorry, the audio is not coming through. Okay. Uh, I'm going to request you to screen share again. Okay. Um, while you're doing the screen share, you'll have a option to uh, check same as sound from the same system, like yeah. the sound to come as well. Just uh, check that and replay the video. It should work. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Stop sharing. Thank you. We're good to go. Project Rangeet helps children thrive in a rapidly changing world. It gives me the power to value and protect all human beings. It gives me the power to value and protect all life on earth. It gives me the power to value and protect my mind, my body and my rights. In a planet hurtling towards a dangerous tipping point, we sometimes lose faith. But hope springs from awareness, empowerment from education, where we teach children to measure success differently in a new world. Project Rangeet uses music, art, and storytelling to speak to the hearts and the minds of our children, to unlock their inner superhero, to inspire them to turn their dreams into reality and to create a compassionate world in which nature and society are at peace. Great, thanks Karishma. So, um, thanks everyone for watching that. So. Let's kick this off with the following. There are three main themes dominating the headlines today. Climate change, COVID, and the stresses associated with COVID. Race issues and global protests. These are like massively dominating our lives today. It's all so overwhelming. And you're probably asking yourself, how are we gonna fix all of this? One of our participants, Manisha Mehta, an educator wrote in saying, how do adults teach children something children already know? What about the wisdom of children? Well, I think this is the central theme to what we believe, that children are superheroes and we need to empower them. On May 16th, President Barack Obama addressed the high school graduating class of 2020 with a virtual commencement speech. He acknowledged that the world is in a precarious position. And if it's going to get better, it's going to be up to the kids. The pandemic has shaken up the status quo and it's laid bare that the old ways of operating simply don't work. 
But he did acknowledge that being one of the old guard, it wasn't for him to give advice to the younger generation. But he did have three really great pieces of advice for the kids. Number one, don't be afraid. We faced worse before. Number two, do what is right. Honesty, fairness, respecting one another, listening to the truth inside yourself. If you do that, then people will gravitate towards you and you'll be part of that solution. Build community. Nothing gets done if you only look out for yourself. So if we're going to defeat this or future pandemics, along with the stress and anxiety it brings with it, if we're going to build a world where everyone has opportunity and save the environment, we have to do it together. We have to be alive to one another's struggles, one another's rights. We have to leave behind the things that divide us and we have to respect each other's differences, setting the world on a different path. And this is where Project Rangeet comes in. Over the last four years, my colleagues and I have built an app. Now this is a bit of a mouthful, but you're go it's gonna be clear as we go along. We've built an app that, has, that delivers to teachers lesson plans. So we face teachers, not children, organized around the UN Sustainable Development Goals that use music, art, and storytelling to teach children the value of self, society, and sustainability. This will all become clear as we go along. What's important to note is you'll discover that we are fully operational, fully tested from a technical user acceptance and impact standpoint. But first up, I'd like us as a team to tell you why we actually started this and what motivated us. And I'm going to request my colleague Priyanka to start. Thanks, Simran. Hi, I'm Priyanka Said Pandit. Um, I am a teacher, a social studies teacher, a music educator, a teacher trainer, a mother of three uh, school going children, both, and I've worked both in the United States and in India for the past 20 odd years, as Prerna said. And I, as a kid, grew up all over the world. Every three years, I moved schools, I moved countries. And something that I realized quite quickly was in order to be happy and to be successful, I needed compassion. And uh, I needed compassion for myself and I needed compassion for others. And this is a skill I feel that every child should learn. And it's why I started uh, Project Rangeet with my two colleagues. Uh, over to you, Karish, uh, Karishma, yeah. Hi, um, I'm Karishma. Hi. Um, I'm Karishma. I realize I'm talking to a lot of teachers, so I apologize in advance for my next statement. Unlike most people, I hated school. According to me, school is for kids who excel academically. But if you're like me and you struggle with math and science, school is a tough place. And with my struggles went my self-esteem. I was good at art, music, sport, things that ultimately didn't count for much back then. It has taken me a long time to get over feelings, uh, get over feeling like a, third, a dumb 13 year old. And sometimes even today I catch myself feeling that way. Project Rangeet allows children to excel at something they might be good at. I am grateful to be part of a team that built a product that will pass on gratitude and kindness uh, to kids around the world because at the end of the day, that is what matters. If there's one leader that inspires me in the world today, um, it's New Zealand's Jacinda Ardern. Um, she said, if I could distill it down into one concept, we are pursuing New Zealand, it is this kindness. Rocket, over to you. Thank you, Karishma. Hi, I'm Raki from Bangladesh. Having completed my undergrad and postgrad in education from the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh, and from the University of Manchester, UK. I started my career as a program facilitator at British Council Bangladesh. Then I joined Bangladesh Civil Service as a teacher educator in 2013 and worked in teacher training college and teachers professional development project of the Education Ministry of Bangladesh. Then I started working with the education team of access to information program that is called A2I program in, in, in Bangladesh. And uh, there, 
uh, I have worked, uh, I have worked in uh, uh, some educational initiatives and that uh, HY project uh, was a policy project of Bangladesh government that works with 58 ministries based in prime minister's office. The time recently HY uh, office moved into the ICT division. So besides working with HY, last year I joined a public university as a faculty. Uh, in addition to this, I have been working with Project Rungit since 2017 when they started operation, their operation in Bangladesh. And I look after the Project Rungit Bangla program, both for Kolkata and Bangladesh. I am very much happy to work here because we are dealing with the future generation and like uh, the uh, the, the, the art and the uh, future people we would like to see, uh, we are taking care of them. And I believe in the uh, new pedagogical solution of Project Rungit, and I believe that that will make it possible. Thank you. Thanks, Rakib Bhai. Thank you so much. So just we'll wrap up the introductions right here. My name is Simran Mochandani. I started my work life um, on Wall Street in New York, and um, I came back to India, I grew up in India, I came back to India in 2007 to start a music venture. Um, it was in 2014 that my life actually changed quite a bit. And um, I was invited by an ex JP Morgan colleague to teach at a, at a Teach for India school actually in Malad, uh, which is a Northern suburb of Bombay. And um, I was teaching a fourth grade class English. And there were eight-year-old kids in my class. There were 14-year-old kids. There were differently able kids. There were young girls who were being physically and sexually abused at home. And I remember leaving that day feeling completely disheartened. Uh, the one thought that went through my head on and on was these kids are defeated at birth. They have no way out of this. I talked to my colleagues, Priyanka and Karishma, and I said, you know, we have to do something about this. And what we decided that day and from that day forward was to do something that would give all kids the courage to believe in themselves, the courage to lead the lives that they actually dream of. And that's why the three of us came together and we're so happy to have Rakib with us. So let's, let's move on. So let's jump into this, you know, um, 21st century skills, social emotional learning. Um, we, you know, it is it, building, uh, we, we talked about this, you know, it is a complex business because A, you need to have a well-organized curriculum. Um, and I, as we go through this presentation, we'll, we'll talk to you about the fact, Priyanka and Karishma will go through our curriculum and talk to you about how it is incredibly well-structured. B, it has to be fun for the kids and for the teachers. So essentially, what a, a, a concept that is widely being spoken about today, joyful learning. So Project Rangeet uses music, art, and storytelling. We'll be going through one lesson plan uh, later on in this, in this uh, presentation. And the focus is to make kids have fun. So we've talked about teachers and children. Now, there are other people in the education ecosystem, administrators, funders, and so what we do in Project Rangeet through our app, which will be demonstrated to you, we are able to monitor, identify, and measure impact dynamically and at scale, and also get feedback from children so that they become part of the learning experience. So those are the three key um, problems we believe we have solved. We will, we will talk to you about them. And what this does is it, in, it expands the surface area of impact of Project Rangit. Um, we received some questions from the audience. What are the SDGs, right? So just really quickly for those who don't know, the UN Sustainable Development Goals are the blueprint adopted by all 190 countries that are members of the UN General Assembly to achieve a better, more equitable, more sustainable future for all. So that's obviously very important. But the question I have is, as educators, as, as politicians, as government, you know, these were adopted in 2015, it's now 2020, the goal is 2030. Are we doing enough? Do we have enough time? Those are the questions that plague us. So if I'm gonna, if, if I'm gonna ask you, because we're gonna probably come at you with a, a bunch of information, if I'm gonna ask you, to focus on one slide, 
really carefully, it's this one. Because this captures in a nutshell what Project Ranjit does. And we do four things. In the questions we received, many asked us if children need devices to participate. Uh, one, one, uh, one of the participants, Kodadad Yazde Gardi, asked, how can we teach poor children who may not have access to devices? Well, the idea is, uh, the idea is that we are, like we said, teacher focused. So we develop content around the UN Sustainable Development Goals and we deliver it to teachers over a mobile app, right? We face teachers and what uh, Priyanka and Karishma will later walk you through um, uh, one, uh, our, uh, how, how our curriculum is organized uh, and that will show you, um, that will actually elucidate this point. Now, you're probably asking yourself, our education systems are already so overburdened. How will we manage to accommodate this and prepare for class? So the demo that we take you through will show you the immense amount of detail that the kids, that this, I'm sorry, that the teachers are given so that the training and time prep for, for class is minimum. We will then demonstrate how we collect class data, including student feedback. In, but thereby children become a part of the curriculum design. And at scale, we are able to figure out where classes are happening so that we, so that as administrators, we know what is going on within our school system. And finally, Rakib will talk to you about how we ran an impact study in our Bangladesh pilots, and we will disclose those results to you. So to complete this slide, in a nutshell, we develop, we deliver, we monitor, we measure. All of this results in happy and thriving students, teachers, administrators and donors, therefore a happy education ecosystem. Sadia Siddiqui, a TFI fellow asked how we can include SDG learning into our curriculum. I'm now going to request my colleague Priyanka and Karishma to walk you through how our curriculum is structured. So we're getting into the meat of it now. So if you remember from the video that you saw uh, initially at the beginning of the presentation, you remember it said, it starts with you. Everything starts with the child first. So this is little uh, Sarah down here holding up our self umbrella. Uh, our curricula curriculum is in, uh, divided into umbrellas and modules. So this umbrella talks about how a child in order to thrive in this world has to value and protect themselves first. So our first module is about mind and the mindfulness and valuing and protecting our own minds. Our second module in this umbrella is about value and protecting your physical self. So we talk about health, we talk about nutrition, um, and each time it's about action. What can we do every day to um, empower children to take care of themselves in terms of their physical health and their mental health? And lastly, the last, um, uh, module of our umbrella is called you are the voice and it talks about not only about the fact that a child has a voice to express their concern to express their rights to express their opinion but that they uh, must value and protect the rights of everyone around them whether they're elders whether they are um, the disabled whether they're animals everybody has a voice and it is the right of everybody to raise their voice um, and value and protect themselves so that's our self umbrella on this foundation of valuing yourself, you can then be bothered to care about somebody else. So society, that's our society umbrella. Down there um, is Maya, who's holding up our society umbrella. The first module of our society umbrella is called I am. Now this is, I am India. This can be, I am the world. This can be, I am Bangladesh. It essentially deals with issues of diversity and discrimination. What are these? They obviously look different in different parts of the world. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, but what are these kinds of discriminations that, 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 people, that children might face? But also what can we do about them? What are the solutions to this problem? We spend a lot of time talking about the golden rule and about empathy and the fact that do unto yourself as you would like to do unto somebody else. On this basis, we go on to our next module, which is called No Bully. If you don't want to be bullied yourself, 
you wouldn't want to bully somebody else. So we start with that notion of, of the golden rule. But um, again, children don't know what bullying is. So we talk a lot about the kinds of bullying and how to recognize that you are in fact being bullying. And then again, the action, empowering children to take action to um, find solutions to their problems themselves uh, with the help of some, some adults, of course. Uh, lastly, the last um, module of this umbrella, the society umbrella, is called Girls Equals Boys. Uh, this is not only about promoting the girl child and um, valuing, protecting the girl child, it's also about the boys and it's about positive masculinity and about the crucial role that little boys play in redrawing the balance, so as to speak, and to create true gender equity. So on this foundation of value in protecting yourself and value in protecting other um, human beings, then only would you care about valuing the planet and protecting our planet. There's Amit, our sustainability superhero. And the first um, module of the sustainability umbrella is called Song of a Tree. This module is about the fact that plants and trees are the fulcrum of all life on earth. And we talk about various uh, ecosystems <clears throat> and habitats and how they all connect in terms of food chains and food webs and give this basis and foundation to children. Then on the next module, which is called Earth Positive. <clears throat> in Earth Positive, we talk about the fact that nature and ecosystems have actual value. They, they, they have an actual dollar amount. They have an actual value and we need to protect them. And we talk to the children about carbon footprints. And these are all the kinds of things that you do to devalue nature, so as to speak. So cutting down trees or burning fossil fuels, those are the things that uh, increase your carbon um, footprint. And what do you do? Again, we are action-based. How do you combat this? We're superheroes and we're going to combat this. How do you combat this? we must increase our carbon handprint. What are things that increase our carbon handprint? Uh, carpooling, uh, recycling, reusing, several things that we, we talk to the kids about. And when your carbon handprint is larger than your carbon footprint, you are earth positive. So armed with this knowledge about the chi and about being earth positive, we come to our last module, which is called Heal the Planet. And in this lesson, we talk about consuming responsibility uh, responsibly regenerating our systems and um, specifically at this time talking about what role we as human beings have played in pandemics and diseases and what we can do to combat that it's not too late um, the time has come for for, for everybody to to face reality in terms of of, of that uh, uh, there is a, a participant i think madhuri mandava who has said um just like Craig Johnson said a few, few weeks ago, that content is no longer king. Skills matter a lot. Content is no longer king. And at Project Rangeet, as I said again and again, we're all about empowerment, about action, right? We're not about only delivering content. Um, the curriculum is germane to the problems of the world today. Simran talked to you about the main three areas that are that there are problems in terms of racism and discrimination in terms of pandemics and the, and, and and covid uh, that has come from the the climate uh, crisis and lastly the anxiety that people have felt in the last few weeks all of these things are addressed in our curriculum and we believe that we are more pertinent now than ever even though we started four years ago i think what we're talking about now is 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 really really important and our time has come and we have tested in classrooms, as you know, and we'll talk about this more and uh, with a lot of success. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Karishma. Um, as Priyanka mentioned, our content is divided into umbrellas. The society umbrella, for example, has three modules, I am no bully and girls equals boys. Um, this is a teacher facing app. Uh, each module has eight lessons of 50 minutes each. If a teacher finds that 15 minutes is too long, they can break it up into lessons of 30 or 20 minutes. Uh, that's around 75 hours of content, which at once a week spans roughly two academic years. Our lessons are targeted at primary school children between the ages of eight to 13. One of our um, 
participants Mandar Sutar asked us the question, why are students between 13 and 18 ignored from this project? Is there a different module for them? Uh, we believe that this age group um, are the most receptive to the concepts that Project Rangeet introduces. Moreover, the tools and methodologies we use, such as music, art, and storytelling, lend themselves best to primary school children. Um, and the reason we don't include children under the age of eight is because our, it, it requires a little bit of uh, reading and writing fluency. Um, it is also important to note that a teacher in our context does not require formal training. For us, a teacher is anyone who might like to empower children with 21st century skills. In fact, we've spoken to schools where they are looking to adopt project relief for students in IB or A levels where they can teach younger children as part of their social service requirements. So I'll just jump in for a second here. Related to what Karishma has said, uh, we have questions at, slash comments from Venki Setu Raman and Sukumaran Selaturai. Um, they asked how children can be involved in the teaching learning process by being involved in teaching other children because that reinforces learning. Uh, another participant, Anu Munshi asked, what do you recommend as a follow-up to the Project Rangit curriculum? Our goal is to empower children so that they become ambassadors of peace, justice, and planet. Um, Priyanka, over to you. So I know there are a lot of educators in this group. Uh, can I have the Howard Garden? It's fine. Thanks. Uh, there are a lot of educators in this group, and you may perhaps have seen this uh, wheel. This is Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences wheel. Howard Gardner um, is, he's still alive, no longer um, teaching at the Graduate School of Education at Harvard. He, he retired. He speaks about the fact that every child has different intelligences, and they have some have multiple of these ones that you see, but most of them have one or two very well-developed intelligences. So a good teacher uh, and a good curriculum targets at least you know, seven or eight of these in every lesson. And at Project Rangeet, we have really attempted to do this. So every module, every lesson incorporates all of these kinds of learning so that every child gets something out of this program. So that's what we do at Project Rangeet. But the fringe benefit of this has been that we found from our pilots uh, in, in Bangladesh, particularly, that teachers who teach Project Rangeet end up being better primary school teachers all around because they use these methodologies, they use the techniques, they use the tools that they've been introduced to in the Project Rangeet classroom in their math classes, in their English classes, in their science classes, and it makes them overall a better primary school teacher. So that's just a fringe benefit of Project Rangeet. <laughs> Great, so now we've given you um, a very bit broad overview of why this teaching is important, what are the problems we solve, and we've talked you through our curriculum. So we're gonna now jump into our app, okay? Um, so that now you can see um, how it's delivered, monitored, and measured. So what you're seeing on your screen now is my phone. Um, I'm essentially, uh, emulating my phone onto the app or uh, onto the into the screen and down here on the bottom right you'll see something called task just very quickly what task is it's an app for impact it's an app that shines a light on the good that people do whether it's in climate justice or social justice whether it's about saving animals or feeding the feeding people who need at times like this um, we, we were very proud to get associated with the founders of task and we uh, designed Project Rangit to fit within this app. So some of you have actually downloaded the app, I see. Uh, it's not mandatory, but some of you have it. So if you do have it, I'd love for you to mimic or go along with what I'm doing. So on your screen, you'll see Project Rangit demo. So I'd like you to, just point at it. So I'd like you to click on Project Rangit demo. So one of the teachers, uh, one of the participants earlier had asked, uh, I think it was Marina Datta had asked whether we are in multiple languages. So yes, we are in multiple languages, uh, currently available in English, Bangla and Hindi. Uh, but uh, getting into a new language is a matter of a couple of months. Uh, Priyanka will talk to you about contextualization because teaching it with context is very important. So we'll get to that, but yes, we are multi-language. Uh, on the top, you'll see 
there is something called a timeline. That's where if you click on the timeline, I hope the guy, I hope the people who, are, who have the app are going along with me. Uh, the timeline will show you there's nothing in it uh, right now, but when we do the demo, you see it. Uh, this is where we collect data from classes real time. So we're gonna jump straight into the tasks. We are gonna choose English. And I want you to think back about what I said that this requires minimum time training, et cetera, for teachers. Time for training, time for class. So when, it, when someone comes in brand new into uh, Project Rangit, they will first click on welcome to Project Rangit all the way at the top. What they will see here is the welcome video that you all saw earlier. So I'm not gonna play that for you. Just quickly giving you a quick run through of uh, what this is. Next, you'll see something called how to. Let's jump in there. So again, I'm brand new to this app. I'm a teacher. I've been asked to teach Project Rangit. I come down here, I scroll down, I get what Project Rangit is about. I get the curriculum organization that Priyanka talked to you about earlier. I get how to deliver content to my kids, how to use the app, how to track where and when lessons are uh, actually happening and how to measure impact. So I think that's the overview that I get as a teacher. I then can view videos. So this here in, in, in over here, you'll see a whole bunch of videos, lots of, lots of good stuff for teachers to see about stuff that's happened in Project Rangit classes. And then I'll click on number four, which is the curriculum. So once I click through here, as a teacher, I get a full, absolutely thorough uh, overview of what Project Rangit umbrellas, what Priyanka talked to you about, the umbrellas, the modules, so you remember she talked to you about I am, she talked to you about no bully. So a detailed explanation. You don't need Priyanka to, <laughs> to teach you that. You can just go through the app and you're, and you're good to go. So that's our three umbrellas. And um, for those of you who have the app, please have a play. For those of you who don't, we'd love if you would, uh, would have a play. I can see that Amit is giving you guys uh, in the chat window uh, where to actually download it from. Um, and it defeats the purpose if I actually go through it in too much detail. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask all of you again, who have the app to click on number five. We're going to now look at one actual lesson. Remember we are organized in umbrellas, modules and lessons. So what we're going to show you now is one lesson, which is 50 minutes long. Which is 50 minutes long. Which is 50 minutes long. I'm just kidding you. Sorry about that. Yeah. Now I need to finish and then you go. So one lesson, which is 50 minutes long. Um, and remember, Karishma told you there are 75 such lessons. So now once we go in here, we're going to click through. Remember again, put your teacher hat on. I've got the overview from before. I click through. And I now get an explanation, an overview of what I'm about to teach. Remember, we have many different lessons. So I get a good overview. I'm not going to go through this slowly, good overview of what you're going to teach, including your learning goals. And now we go into an actual lesson. And I'm going to ask Priyanka to take over here. So here you see, um, it says lesson one. And if you could just scroll down a little bit, I'm gonna show you the overview of the lesson. Every lesson is set up in pretty much a similar fashion. It tells you how many minutes each lesson is, which is always 50 minutes. And it's structured in a particular fashion, starting with a hello pranam song, uh, then a hook, then plan and definitions, then an original songbook, and then a wrap up and cliffhanger. Each of these, as we will see, have uh, assigned and allotted times to them so that it suggests to the, the teacher how much time to spend on each so that they can complete all of these in a, a 50 minute session. The page two of, of, of this uh, is always the materials you might need for that particular lesson. Uh, it's very simple stuff that uh, is available in, in, in any classroom um, 
in any environment. We, we, we have worked, uh, we haven't said this yet, but we've worked in the most remote regions in Bangladesh, as well as in high-end private schools. Um, and we, we make sure that, that everything we ask for is easily available. Um, and then every class starts with the Hello Pranam Salam song. And because we uh, want to model for you that we are all about joyful learning, we are going to now sing the Hello Pranam Salam song all together for I'm going to have Simran and Karishma join in with me. And Rakib. And Rakib, yes, sorry, and Rakib. So here we go. And I'd like you to tap your tables or your laps or whatever it is. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. Hello, Ranam. Hello, Saram. Hello, hello. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Hello, Ranam. Hello, Saram. Hello, hello. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Hello to Simran. Hello to Karishma. Hello to Rakib. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Hello to the teachers. Hello to the parents. Hello, everybody. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Hello, Ranam. Hello, Salam. Hello, hello. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Come on, Project Rangi, starting right now. Okay, can I be heard? Yeah. Yes. Am I audible? You are. Okay. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Uh, this is an example of uh, the greeting song that we use every lesson. The reason we use this song is that the research has shown that children feel much more included um, and focused on the lesson at hand if they're called out by name. And um, every class therefore starts the Hello Pranam song. After the Hello Pranam song, we launch into the next part of our lesson. Do you, want to, do you want to tell them that no one has to be a singer? Ah, know? yes. Very importantly, no one has to be a singer. If you don't feel like singing, you can just the, press the play button. There is a recording of the Hello Pranam Salon song. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so the next, uh, the next part of the lesson is I'm um, going to give it over to my colleague Karishma, who is going to walk you through the hook. Thanks, Priyanka. Thanks, Priyanka. So a lot of the topics we teach children can be a, can be a little can bit a little um, difficult to understand. Uh, so we introduce a hook activity, which kind of makes it interesting for them uh, and kind of piques their interest. So I'm going to get, um, for those of you who have a piece of Play-Doh or Atta, please follow along. Simran and Priyanka are going to be doing the same with me. Now, for all the teachers out there, imagine that you are speaking to a classroom full of children. So I'm just going to pretend like all of you are my children. So all of all the children, you have a plain piece of Play-Doh. I want you to make a circle, make a ball out of it. Yeah. Now imagine again, we're in a classroom and the teacher will ask the children, look around to the children sitting on your left, the right behind in front of you. What are the similarities and what are the differences between your piece of Play-Doh and someone else's? And typically the children will say, oh, Mine's a little bigger, mine smells a little different. But the one thing that is the same is that it's all plain. There's no color. It's just a simple plain piece of Play-Doh. Um, now I'm gonna ask each of my children to take a colored paint. So Simran has green, Priyanka has orange, and I have blue. I want blue. <laughs> and mix it into, into the Play-Doh. Don't, don't be afraid to get your hands messy. That's the fun of this. Okay, there you go. So I mix it, mix it. And so the kids have a lot of fun doing this. And um, okay, now, now that, <laughs> so now uh, the teacher will ask the children, okay, now, you're, now look around and tell, tell me what are the similarities and what might be the difference, uh, difference in uh, each one's uh, Play-Doh. Simran, Priyanka, are you showing your, yeah, okay, great. Um, 
so the children typically say that uh, oh mine smells a bit different now or um, my it smells different the shape is no longer a circle so the teacher will now use these pieces of play-doh and, and imagine that there's a classroom full of colors the teacher will use this piece of play-doh and equate it to us human beings just as all of us are different on the outside. We're all different skin colors. We eat different foods. We speak different languages. We follow different religions. But ultimately, we're all made of the same stuff. We're all that plain piece of Play-Doh on the inside. And our differences, whatever they might be, have to be respected because ultimately, we're all humans and we all deserve love and respect. Awesome. Sorry, ma'am. Yes, me that. I'll just go on to the next yeah. activity. Just one so once they've been hooked onto that concept, um, again, it's just a little introduction to the concept. We talk to them a little bit about the definitions that will come in the, in the module ahead. These are terms that we don't expect them to know. So for example, in this particular lesson, it's diversity, discrimination, unity. Um, we give them these definitions and then we launch into our song tale. Now, what is the song tale? The song tale is an original story which introduces, it has the purpose of introducing the children to the um, issues that they would like, uh, the, the, the teacher it introduces the children to the issues that the teacher would like to discuss in terms of diversity and discrimination. They are just introductions. We do not solve any problems over here. But when we introduce these, um, someone, I believe it was Billy, who had mentioned, Billy yeah. yes, that we will talk about this in, in a little while uh, after I sing the song, but uh, these differ, these issues of discrimination will differ depending obviously where uh, the song is um, being taught. Um, I'm going to actually teach, uh, uh, sing a little bit of the song so that you just get an idea, just the first uh, verse um, or two. And, 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 and again, and again, you don't have to be a, a singer. You, you don't know. have to be a singer because you can just press play there and it's all recorded for you. The lyrics, the pictures and the voice. So you could just mouth if you wanted to. So I'm actually going to sing along with myself right now and Karishma and Simran are going to join. All right. <laughs> Sorry, give me one second. I'm going to restart that because I was on mute. I mean, my volume is off. Discrimination is a plague in our nation. So let's take action to respect our diverse world. Our screen and color, language, wealth, and gender are just a few things to respect in our diverse world. Little Kristen love playing her football. The girls around her made much fun of her. And the schoolboys banned her from their game. Said girls can't play sports, what a shame. Beauty rally. La classical ballet. He asked his mum for lessons every day. His classmates found out they called him mean names and would not let him join their games. Join me. Discrimination is a plague in our nation. So let's take action to respect our diverse world. Our feet and color, language, wealth, and gender are just a few things to respect in our diverse world. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, we then go on to introduce skin color, things of race and skin color. You see Ruby Bridges. And we see on the other side of Ruby Bridges, sorry, just go back sorry, to Ruby yeah. Bridges. I want to talk about the perspective, yeah. So we have Ruby Bridges, who is a, a, an African-American child um, who's being introduced into an all-white school. And then on the flip side, we have um, the other child, uh, Ulrich Vanya, who is um, a fair child who's going to school in, in, in Kenya, and he's being called Ghost Boy. And we talk a lot about 
uh, perspective to the children. It really doesn't matter um, who you are because it matters what the majority around you is. You might see, you might think that people with brown skin are very strange, but if you're in Kenya, uh, people with brown skin will think you're very strange. So it's a, it's a matter of perspective. And we talk a lot about that in Project Rangit. Um, and moving down, uh, the next uh, one that we talk about here in this particular um, uh, uh, song tale is um, religious uh, discrimination. This particular story is, is about uh, India, but um, I think Billy uh, talked to us about, well, how, how do we deal with contextualizing and with I I issues of diversity and discrimination in different countries? We actually do quite a bit of that. We worked in Bangladesh and in Bangladesh this picture uh, had to be changed in fact uh, we had to have a Muslim boy on the outside um, and it, and the Hindu girl on, on the inside being discriminated against because of the majority issue and children were not going to be able to uh, as our Bangladeshi colleagues told us they would not be able to identify with us this so um, that kind of uh, tweaking is is required a lot in terms of names in terms of sometimes dress uh, in terms of language, is there anything you want to add to that, Simran? Okay. Um, and then moving on, in this case, we talked about social economic discrimination, but all of this, as we said, can be tweaked to which um, culture and society we're talking about. These are indicative uh, forms of discrimination. So then you've sung the story, and again, it's just an introduction. We're not solving any problems with this story. And we come to the end of lesson one, because 50 minutes are over. And I'm going to give it over to Simran here. We, after our homework is uh, discussed, the uh, teacher does the following. Yeah. So, um, sorry, you want to just mute yourself? Huh? Walter? Okay, cool. So, as now just again, let's go back to thinking about you know big school system. We've got a bunch of teachers who've just taught these classes. So, at the end of every class, what we do, what each teacher is asked to do is to first enter and please those of you with the app I'm requesting you to follow this part with me enter a random number of like maybe you know estimate the number of kids in your class so I'm going to say you know 23 I'm going to take a class photograph so I'm going to ask Priyanka to smile for the camera and I'm saying okay that's a good photograph that's my 23 kids now we talk to you not just about collecting data about how many kids and photographs, but really important to figure out, are the kids enjoying this? So I'm just gonna write in here, I'm the teach, my teacher name, right? So Simran, um, that's fine. And we did two activities today, the Play-Doh activity and the song. So we're just asking for a show of hands from the kids. How many found it boring and didn't understand why we were doing it? How many found it fun? The way it's conducted to try and keep bias out of it is we're going, we, what we're suggesting, this can be customized for any school system, but what we're suggesting is the kids put their heads down on their desk and raise their hands based on what they felt. So was it boring? I didn't understand. I had fun, but I didn't understand. Or C, I enjoyed it and I can explain it to a friend. Same thing for the second, the second one, which is the song. So I'm gonna quickly enter some data here. Let's just say uh, eight, three, 10. I hope the others who have the app are doing this with me. Uh, 10, three, eight. Okay, so I have entered the number of kids. I've taken a class photograph. I've said whom I am. And I have talked and I have entered very quickly the data and now I am ready to go. So I have this blue button down at the bottom. I'm going to say, so it takes the kid, it takes the teacher. It adds maybe a couple of minutes, but think about the power of what we're collecting right here. So I'm saying, okay. So my data, I'm teacher sitting somewhere. My data is being gathered. Okay, and it says, my task has been received. You see here that it says one SPWR token. We'll talk about that in a second. That's a superpower. Um, um, we'll get to that in a second. And I say continue. Now I'm going to ask my colleagues, Amit and Dylan, who will help me to 
look at the tasks we have received. So hopefully some of you have done this and I'm just refreshing my screen. Just bear with me a sec. Okay, we've got six tasks. That's awesome. Okay, so now we'll, because I have, I'm doing a demo, I'm also putting on the hat of a verifier. Uh, so the verifier could be a school principal, the verifier could be a, a district administrator. It's just to ensure that the data we're collecting uh, is, is kind of okay. So I'm going to go in here and we see what the tasks are. Sorry about that. I think um, we're all consuming a huge amount of bandwidth here. So just bear with me a second. Okay, so Tara Mukhi, Madhuri, Rakeb, Karan, I did, Steve and Renisha. So we've got a bunch of people. So let's, uh, Amit and Dylan, let's quickly, uh, I'm gonna verify my task, but I'm gonna ask you to go through the other tasks and verify them. So this is what a verification looks like. If I zoom in here, tells you exactly where I am right now. So I'm sitting somewhere in Mumbai, right? So you know where I am, you know who I am, you know what time I did the class and which, on which day. You also know, that I have 23 kids in my class and we've got Priyanka smiling there for us. And then there's all the data I've collected. Okay. And I'm just gonna say, yeah, that looks good. I'm now the district administrator. I say, accept, cool. So now we've accepted that task. Um, hopefully Amit and Dylan are hard at work accepting the other tasks. So now just expand, your, expand what you're thinking here. You know, there's tons of tasks out there. They're being verified. Are you, can, could you go in and verify yeah. some of these tasks? So just bear with us a second. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in to the demo and let's check out what our timeline looks like. All right, so here's Madhuri, who's got some data here, Vinodini, um, Tara Mukhi sitting out on a nice looking lawn there, Tara Mukhi, Rakib, hello Rakib, and so on and so forth. And so think about now, this data can sit here, it can be exported to social media, it can be um, exported to MIS systems, and uh, it can be exported to a system where we start evaluating the data we've collected from our children, and start really understanding the, you know, how efficient we are, how the kids are doing. And then we've got a little more stuff here where we can look at impact by location. Sorry, just one second. Oh, impact. Yeah, there we go. Impact by location. Scroll up. So this is, I think scroll it's just up. going a bit too slow here. Scroll so what up. that, huh? I think scroll up. Sorry? Scroll up. Go to, back to location and scroll up. Oh, sorry about that. So now you see, my apologies. Um, we have a bunch of people in New York who've just done the task. Some people down in Miami. Oh, you've got a nice international crew here today. UK, all over India, Bangladesh, Singapore. So in effect, if, let's just say I was running a school system all across Bangladesh that we are doing right now or in West Bengal. This is the power of collection of data at scale dynamically that, um, that we can do. So again, this is what we have chosen. There's a bunch of other data that one can collect. Um, so we're now going to go into the last two pieces of, um, of the demo. Sorry about that. My hands are a bit bad, ah, okay. With this, okay, cool. I just really quickly wanna show you what an impact test looks like. Um, 
because impact finally is the golden grail you know can you can you deliver uh, can you deliver something that is monitored and measured you know and assessed and so i'm just going to quickly show you how this works if we go in so typically you'll see there's a start here and an end here right so each of our umbrellas has a impact test and what does this impact test do it basically measures attitudes behavior okay so i'm going to show you what a what a baseline test looks like so the, it's just teaching. correct correct priyanka priyanka made the very valid point what we like to do is we give the test to teachers as well so that we understand where the teachers stand with regard to a lot of these issues um in a classroom setting we make the assumption that there's only one mobile device so obviously coming back to some of the questions from earlier we can't expect everyone to have a mobile device so what the teacher does is they go down here and click on the assessment test this may take a little while to load once they click on the assessment test they print it out and give it to the kids it's 20 20 to 23 quick questions that the kids just do multiple choice so if you remember priyanka sang about uri rally so imagine before we start project rangeet can a boy take dance lessons stick your preference yes no i don't know there will be a lot of no's there will be a lot of i don't know's and hopefully once we go through project rangeet those a's the yeses will go up similarly whose job is this can a woman fly, fly a fight a fight a plane would you rather be friends with a with a who's dark skinned or b who's light skinned the muslim child would you rather talk to them or not so like this there's a bunch of different questions here's questions on bullying so on and so forth so you i'm sure you get the idea again we don't prescribe what your test has to be we we've designed it but it's really up to you the user to say okay this is the kind of test i want to run what then happens is we run the baseline we store that data the the teacher doesn't have access to the to, the teacher doesn't have to correct the uh, the papers the the data is in, is it goes to the goes into a database we then teach project rangeet and then in the end line we run the same test again and real time and i think some of you educators here will appreciate the value of that that real time we can calculate the statistical evidence of whether project rangeet is working or not so i think i've gone on far too long with regard to the demo uh we do also a lot of gamification but i'm going to avoid talking about that today let's just focus on um the content how it's delivered monitored and measured and with that you can go back to the presentation karishma thanks um we work with a number of uh, organizations around the world uh, some are here on this call uh, our biggest work is in west bengal and in bangladesh um with uh, we worked in a with the prime minister's office the department of primary education uh, rakib will talk to you in a little while about um, uh, you know some of the work we've done there and just one accolade that we are very proud of is that the un has recognized us as one of the leading uh, uh players in at in helping to fulfill the un sdgs from an education standpoint so with that i'm going to now request my colleague rakit who is now sitting in bangladesh to talk to you about the actual impact in a few minutes because finally that's really critical does this actually work with kids uh, we we'll, we like to ask him how uh, what 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 he discovered rakit please uh thank you simranda uh actually in 2017 with the technical support of access to information program on prime of prime minister's office uh project rongeti started a small pilot program in 50 schools uh government primary schools with the directorate of primary education of bangladesh government uh i worked there uh, as the project coordinator on behalf of ay then uh it was an eye opening lesson for me i must say before starting the intervention that is project rongit curriculum in schools uh, we ran the baseline assessment at and at the end of the project we ran again another inline assessment to monitor the pro project impact 
and we have completed the impact study using 30 different questionnaires for the students and key informant interviews and FGDs with teachers and other officials and parents also. Uh, it is an 80 page detailed report, which is uh, in short, uh, uh, describes the tremendous success of the project, which has brought behavioral changes in teachers and students. As you, uh, as you can see on the screen, like I am coming back to this, like uh, uh, it is a glimpse of the report actually. It is not the full uh, report. We will show you, share two different findings from the report. And uh, uh, one is students' overall performance. It has been increased around 20%. So like uh, baseline, we have observed that uh, students' mean performance was like around 70%. And uh, at the end of the project, we have found that the performance improved to, to, to 20% and it is 90% at that time. So, and another findings is it, is, it is kind of action oriented findings. We asked several questions to the students, like uh, what is their response towards bullying? And uh, uh, primarily they, many of them around 23%, they say that they don't know what to do. And uh, at the end of the project, it, the number decreases and maximum of them, they told us that uh, they replied that they responded as uh, they will help the victim. And uh, uh, some of them, they mentioned that they will not intervene in the uh, incident, but they hate this uh, bullying things. So uh, it was our findings. And at the uh, beginning, as we showed that the project quantifies the performance of the students in a way that we can see the team and the success of the project. Uh, this new pedagogy has helped students and teachers shift their traditional mindsets of empathy and social emotional skills. It is not about the performance improvement of the students only. It is the uh, performance improvement for teachers as well, as it is described at the beginning by Simranda. And, uh, uh, here, I, I, I shared with you a glimpse of the report and uh, it was a great experience for me working on this project because of this uh, hideous success, tremendous success, the Directorate of Primary Education has planned to pilot the project on a larger scale in 160 schools across the country uh, before scaling up uh, it for the whole country because they are thinking that this social emotional learning, this empathy and this, this uh, thinking regarding diversity, discrimination, this will help us to make a one kind world in future. So they are very much looking forward to it. And uh, now I would like to, like, I, I won't I am talk much more about this. I would like to invite you to listen to one of our mentors. Uh, her name is Rahana Hawk. Uh, she is a head teacher of a government primary school who implemented this project in her primary schools in Bangladesh. Uh, let's listen to her. Hello everyone. Greetings from Bangladesh. I am Raihana. I am a primary school teacher. I teach grade four. Nice to meet you all. I was a mentor for the project Rongit program that was carried out in government primary schools taught in Bangla. It was an amazing project. By teaching project Rongit, I really understood in my heart the meaning of the words bully, empathy, diversity, discrimination. Moreover, my students really learned this in a practical way as well. My students are very enthusiastic and always waiting for the project and ask me, used to ask me, teacher, when our class will start? We want to participate. Time is up. Let us begin. My students love the project because it was practical role play, art activities and music. You know, children, when they know something, they only learn. But when they get practically experience, they can remember and make it change. I encourage all teachers to participate in this project. I want to spread this project all over the Bangladesh. It changed my behavior and enriched my pedagogical knowledge and method, as well as my students' moral values. It can change my society and community. Thank you so much. Bye. Great. So I think we now need to conclude. Um, I hope that, um, you know, we've, we've given you a lot of information. I hope it is clear. 
Um, and, you know, I come back to <clears throat> where we are in the world today and what's most needed to fix it. I'm going to borrow from journalist Thomas Friedman. The world is in the grip of COVID and at home, teachers, parents, children are all stressed. Stressed about learning, the future, their jobs, parenting. As a species, we decided not to cooperate with one another or demonstrate empathy towards one another in a pandemic. We decided to discriminate on the, color, on the basis of the color of skin, religion, sexuality, language. We decided to invade pristine ecosystems and hunt wildlife, bringing viruses close to us, making ourselves ever more vulnerable. Where we are today in the world was not inevitable. It was all about poor choices and poor values. It's becoming clear that empathy, compassion, climate change, personal well-being, anxiety, depression, they're all interconnected. And to solve our problems, we need to have a plan. And that's the Uber lesson here. As the world gets more deeply intertwined, everyone's behavior, the values each of us brings into this interdependent world matters more than ever. Priyanka talked to you about the golden rule earlier. And therefore, so does the golden rule. The golden rule has never been more important. <sighs> do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. Because more people in more places, in more ways, on more days, can now do unto you and you unto them like never before. One of our participants, Karina Menon, asked, what is the single most important thing you hope to achieve with Project Rangit? Well, Karina, we believe that children are superheroes. If we can empower them and step out of their way, we will have achieved our purpose. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll now go to Q&A. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, I, thank you so much for a wonderful session, everyone. Uh, we have a couple of questions um, from our participants uh, throughout this session. Would you like for me to read them out? Yes, please. You can stop sharing. How can you, I, I want to, is the app free? There are, th there are three questions about whether the app is paid or free. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, so the app is, the app is uh, basically charged uh, on a per license basis. So a license could be taken by a teacher or a student or a parent. Um, and of course it differs, but the, the professional teaching app that is used in, uh, in schools, it costs uh, a, a hundred US dollars a year and the teacher can teach as many kids as they want. So that's, that's what it is. Great. Um, can this be integrated into the existing curriculum? This has been asked about state curriculum as well as CBSE. So I'm going to request Priyanka to take this question. So there's two ways in which this could probably be done and has been done. In many cases, this replaces um, moral science, life skills, values that some schools already have, SUPW, uh, there's a whole, kind, a whole bunch of uh, nomenclature that's, that schools have used. So in one case, this can replace that uh, period in the week. In the other case, if they didn't want to add another period, there are lessons in this as Karishma told us, we are very flexible. So there are lessons in these and there are modules in these and there are umbrellas in these that lend themselves very well to subjects. So um, in cl climate change, uh, it can be studied in science, it can be studied in geography. Uh, there are many aspects of the diversity and discrimination module that can be covered in history. There are many aspects of our rights module. You have a voice that can be covered in say civics. So th they can be integrated into already existing subjects. So these are two ways in which um, states, state boards and school boards could integrate Project Ranji. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, is this, uh, there's this amazing question which says, uh, how, why is it not, why is social emotional learning not integrated into the regular curriculum? Why does it have to be a special teaching? Why does it have to be like an alternative teaching? That's a question. Rakib, how about you take this question since you are so yeah. involved? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I have been working in the education field so many years. Uh, and uh, I always think this way because the education we need most, we call it sometimes alternative education, special education. But that should be the general education, nah? Because like that should be, in, that should be, this should be the general uh, curriculum. Why we have to compare, why we have to incorporate, why we have to do this. Because like uh, these years, uh, uh, through uh, this experience, I have learned that the curricular activities doesn't help us that much to uh, build the future generation in a way that we expect them. But the co-curricular activities, the extracurricular activities, we call them, those are very much useful. And uh, to, to tell you, just to tell you, like 21st century skills, we talk about this very much. But you, if you look at it very carefully, then you will see that this 21st century skills it can be developed very easily through this kind of project, this kind of project activities, this kind of activities. So I, uh, I don't uh, like, would, I would like to call it a natural curriculum or general curriculum. And that, that thing is a special one. So this alternative should be the main, main thing to me. Yeah. So when we step out of kids way, that's when we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like, uh, yeah, if you, if you, if I would like to quote from the little prince, uh, as an, as adult people, we like numbers and we would like to quantify things. Uh, but, uh, these things, this emotional learning, social, emotional skills that matters at the end of the day. Absolutely. I mean, we can see in the chat window how much all educators agree with, uh, with all of you. Uh, there's a question about how do you make parents realize that SEL education is important? How do we make them take educa uh, SEL education as seriously as uh, STEM academics? Uh, I'll attempt to answer this. Um, I, I'm a parent and uh, we all know that you, you can't make anybody think in any way that you think. Um, it's, it's a matter of experiencing. So um, I think just having a play with some of these things as parents and we are, we are doing that more and more. We're trying to connect Project Rangit with parents and, and give them a chance to have a look at, that, look at this. And also by looking at what's going on in the world right now, as Simran talked to us about, uh, the, the biggest problems that we are facing have to do with racism, discrimination, climate change, uh, COVID, and it's affecting everything, uh, our, our minds, our anxieties, our, our mental state. Um, if parents can't see um, that that is pr of primary importance to them as well as their, their children, then um, I think we're in a little bit of trouble in the next 20 years. So, uh, oh, hopefully having a play at Project Rageet, but also observing what's going on around will uh, give parents that push that they need, that this is truly important. Yeah, hope that answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, there are a couple of questions about, is this most relevant for primary, um, given the activities that you have, the song that you have? Um, is there, uh, is it only for primary students? I mean, subject wise, how about activity period, dance, arts, etc. Sure. Um, yeah, so the reason we target the primary children and typically between the ages of eight to 13 is because uh, we think that these, these concepts are best received by children of that age. Once you Crossed, not, not that people cannot change, but typically once you've crossed a, um, you know, crossed a specific age, uh, it's more difficult to, to, um, to get, these, get children to understand these concepts of self, society, and sustainability. Kids that age absorb these concepts better, but also the methodologies we use, which is music, art, and storytelling. Older kids might find it a bit kiddish and this is targeted more at younger kids to, to color and play around and, and the music is targeted at that, um, at that age group specifically. And also we don't go too young, which is we don't go below eight years because it does require some amount of reading and uh, writing fluency, uh, which is why it's the eight to 13 uh, age group that we target. 
Could I just actually go back to one uh, the previous question, Priyanka, that you were answering about um, <clears throat> about parents? So when COVID struck um, in March, we were like, you know, obviously we're hearing all the anxieties that people have at home, et cetera, et cetera. And so we decided that we would actually start giving away activities for free just to include families at home. We were hearing about how your parents with young kids are just going nuts at home, um, you know, and keeping them engaged in a really positive way. So we actually started sharing uh, what we call uh, Project Rangit at home every twice, uh, twice a week on our Facebook page. And as you can see, we've got like 75 lessons with packed with activities. So we just started giving out activities for free which is on our Facebook page, you know, Facebook. Out there, it could yeah. So facebook.com project Rangit, uh, you know, please, you know, have a look. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got a ton of activities out there. The, I, the reason I brought this up is I think, you know, this is a really good way to get parents to see the value in it. So they take it more seriously. Thank you. Um, Someone has asked, can this be a part of, a, of the subject called citizenship in the UK national curriculum? Be part of the um, UK national curriculum citi citizenship, right? I mean, we do deal with citizenship. Absolutely. We deal with rights um, in your know, voice. We deal with rights. So Absolutely. it can be adapted. And in fact, in, in Bangladesh, we have like uh, called it uh, uh, social science and there is uh, this society umbrella. Uh, this is very much relevant to that part. It is not like line by line, but thematically they are very much similar. And these activities help students like uh, to understand the basic things and how could they play their role as a, uh, a concerned citizen of the society. Yeah. So these wrong and geet activities help them to understand this kind of complex things uh, to uh, make them understood and to make them uh, practice in, in the daily life. Yeah, and I, I want to just emphasize again, again and again that we have such a variety of modules with such a variety of skills that we um, introduce the children to that um, it can be used in any way that the teacher wishes to. So it can be used for citizenship. As I said, it can use, be used for science class. It can be used for English class because there's a lot of, or language class because there's a lot of, there is some amount of writing involved. So um, it can be uh, tweaked for any class that, 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 that a teacher wishes to um, use it for. I mean, I think, I think, you know, at the end of the day, what, what Priyanka, Karishma, myself, Rakeb, what we really believe is we've, we've, we're just trying to lay a foundation um, it has to, I mean, one of the key things we decided when we started this was it has to go all over the world and for it to work all over the world, it has to work in different cultural contexts for different situations. Um, so yeah, we just, we hope to be that medium, that sort of medium of change. Uh, that will be again, coming back to that question, you know, that success for us, if we, if we, if we can impact children all over the world. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about, uh, it's extremely well organized, uh, but do teachers find it difficult to navigate? Uh, just wanted to know your experience in India and Bangladesh. I think, Rakib, uh, you were closest to the teachers and you could probably answer that. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, yeah, obviously this new kind of application, they face uh, uh, some sort of challenges to handle it at the beginning. But once they are oriented, well oriented with the apps in the training process, through the training process. So it's nothing like if you look at the application, it's very simple, very, very much simple. And uh, they handle it very easily uh, because we worked in Bangladesh uh, with different kind of teachers. Uh, we have, we had teachers from an island and there is not that much good internet connectivity, but they didn't find any kind of difficulty to access this kind of app and our activities. So I must say it is not that much difficult. It is very easy for them. Okay. Uh, is there any orientation training for the teachers who are going to be the facilitators before the project has started? Sure. 
Yes, uh, we, we, we do have uh, a, a, um, a, a training manual, especially when we have uh, like, like Bangladesh, large school systems uh, with a whole bunch of teachers that, that we can't directly see. We do um, training, uh, mostly via Zoom, uh, as we have it right now and in this climate. And uh, that training, it's, it's minimal, but uh, we do have that facility. But what the hope is, is that going through the app um, and going through the pre-training uh, uh, section that Simran took you through, the curriculum, how to, how to manipulate this app, videos, uh, it's very rich in itself. So pretty much any, any teacher should be able to pick it up and, and get it you know, 80, 80, 80% um, quite easily. That last 20%, we also have uh, closed face group books with, our, with, our, with, with some of our larger clients where teachers touch base with us every week, in fact, yeah. and ask questions and um, yeah. get prepped for the next yeah. lesson, I mean, et cetera. Yeah, it's all about building community with the teachers. Um, you know, and as Rakib said, you know, it's maybe anything's difficult in the beginning, but we, we help the teachers and actually what was really wonderful was the teachers actually started helping each other. Um, so that was, that was brilliant. Great. Um, thank you so much. Uh, before we move on to the next question, uh, letting all our participants know, uh, if you want to reach out to our speakers or the pro or project Rangeet in general, their uh, contact information has just been shared in the chat window. Um, there are a couple of questions about homework. Um, Will homework set be set in the conventional way or will the style of homework be set more creatively following along with Project Rangit's new style of learning in a way where their experience with the community or the world or their families might be involved? I've basically combined two questions, but they were both about what is homework? Sure. Sure. Um, homework is of various kinds, many different kinds, actually. Uh, some is as simple as go home and um, you know help your mother with with something because because you're you're trying to be em empathetic and you you want to know what it is like to be a mother for for 12 hours or 24 hours so something some things are as simple as that um, other things are what we call uh, we have sustainability tasks and empathy tasks and these are perhaps a little bit more uh, elaborate uh, it might involve growing a, a garden planting a garden and it might be a project that would take a couple of days so these these are um, some of the kinds karishma can, can you add to that um, yeah so sorry. Um, a, a lot of the homework the kids have to do also very often they have to do it in groups. Are you hearing? Oh, sorry. Um, a a okay. lot of the kids have to do it in groups. Uh, so that also sort of fosters the whole, you know, working together. Um, like Priyanka mentioned, it's very important to involve communities and parents because there's no point teaching children something in the classroom and then they go home and that's sort of completely erased because the parents are like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so um, what we try and do is we give kids, so, so for example, in our girls equals boys, we try and teach girls and boys that you know it's important to, to help at home. It's important to do certain things. So we give them tasks or chores where they have to go home. In the case of empathy, it's something as simple as, you know, people clean your school. There are bus drivers. There are people who do things for you. And very often they can be invisible. Have you ever bothered to check, um, you know, about them? Ask them what a day in their life is like. So a lot of this is involving community members, people that do things for them. Um, and of course, back home, parents and, and, and people in their families. I would like to add something here. Like uh, if you look at the empathy tree, the uh, kind bucket and this kind of things. So we assign this kind of homework for the students. They can work with their parents, with their siblings, with their community friends, like to design. Sometimes they design the role play activity, like uh, whenever they come to the school and they have this kind of activity. So they develop their script at home with the, with the help of their like siblings and parents. So these kind of different kind of activities we give them and they enjoy it very much because it is nothing similar for every week it's different. So uh, sometimes they collect uh, this kind of uh, experience, experiential thing, they note it down and they write on the leaves of the tree that is called empathy tree. 
so they put the leaves on the tree this kind of things they, they praise each other this kind of things so yeah so i just to add one more point i i didn't talk about you know the fact that project rangeet actually has a reward reward system we've actually gamified to the extent that people want to um uh to the extent they want to uh rakib i believe you need to leave uh so please please thank you so much for joining us um and hope everything is good with you there um we'll we'll continue we'll finish up over here so thank you rakib thank, thank you, rakib. you thank you so much so i was just going to i just quickly go over the fact that you know we've developed our own um yeah. project rangi token it's called a superpower thank you thank you so lovely audience today and thanks so much for your lovely questions yeah so we've de we've developed something called a superpower token and a superpower token is something that teachers today get for teaching a class which is a a verified task you saw we went through that verified thing and i showed you that thing about one spwr this can be expanded you know we did we had the teachers having best song of the week or best played or activity of the week and what that does is it creates this really fun competition teachers start collecting superpowers and then in bangladesh we had a really interesting way it's not money i want to be very clear there's no money involved think of it as a frequent flyer point so teachers could actually go in and uh, convert their superpower tokens into talk time on their mobile phones data plants because we made all these corporate so if you just think about if you think about corporate giving you can get corporate giving involved in an incredibly dynamic way into into children's education so you 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 set up a plan with with a with a particular company that's interested and maybe they give you discounts on shoes or discounts on stationery or something something like that um again completely customizable so uh and then you can run leaderboards you can involve parents and get and maybe a parent has been really a fantastic project rangit teacher or a, a project rangit parent or a sibling you know so we can design all kinds of systems around this and make it really fun you know because it's fun in the classroom but make it fun for the community make it fun and and engaging for the administrators for donors uh and most importantly massively transparent um that's very important so shining the light on the good you do is critically important and we can do that via this app thank you thank you so much for those um those amazing answers guys um we would like to thank karishma priyanka simran and please convey our gratitude to rakib and the entire project rangeet team for being time and expertise i request the speakers to please also quickly share their thoughts on the webinar today um yeah i mean for the i mean the first most important thing is we're really grateful that um you know firki invited us to um to be a part of this this is uh, this is an incredible platform uh the obviously very engaged we saw so many interesting questions that helped us to guide how we were going to present to you uh, so we'd really like the platform uh, it's a very relevant audience and uh, we really hope uh, we really hope to engage with many teachers educators with uh, tfi fellows we really hope that this conversation doesn't end here and uh, we are um, we, we we form we form really great alliances and take take this forward with many children because if we didn't know if it wasn't obvious before um you know it's it's it should be obvious to everyone now this is needed and we need it uh, today thank you um simran uh, sorry karishma and priyanka we would like to hear from you as well sure i mean uh, simran said uh, said most of it but I, i know i know that there's a lot of information that we gave you <laughs> you and uh, hopefully no one is feeling overwhelmed with the information but um, again as simran said that this is the the time has come this is this is the right time for something like this it, it, it happens to be that we've been working on this for 4 years but uh, the last 2 months uh, have 
it's been like a punch in the face that at, at least the three of us have felt that this is really the time for Project Rangeet. Uh, every idea that we espouse in our curriculum um, seems to be uh, popping its head up in, in, on, our, on our planet. And, and the, the, it's easy because um, it's fun. It's, it's, it's fun for the kids. So we feel like it's something that they would look forward to every week. We know from experience that that's the case. Um, and if, if you're doing something that's fun and you're changing lives, uh, what better way to do it? Yeah. Karishma, can you Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. This is by far the largest group of people we have ever spoken <laughs> to. Um, I, I just, you know, from my introduction, when, when I create these uh, lesson plans with Priyanka and the team, uh, I think of myself as that 13 year old kid and uh, how I wish that I had had access to something like this in school. So um, uh, my, you know, I would love for kids today to just, you know, look forward to Project Rangeet and know that uh, they don't have to worry about how, th there's no grades here, you know, it's not about how well am I finally going to do in that 10 standard exam. This is about making, um, hope, hopefully making, uh, people who can uh, go out into the world and make this a better place. As Simran said, a lot of us have destroyed the world and we now leave it in the hands of kids and we hope that they manage to do a better job than we did. Thank you so much for sharing, all of you. Um, thank you so much for the wonder wonderful yeah. participation um, yeah. to all our participants as well. Um, our next webinar is scheduled to take place on June 16th on Integrative Arts nurturing the creative process as a tool for transformation with Nemo Patel, renowned hip hop musician, humanitarian ambassador of love and peace. So do look for Firki emails in your inbox for information on this upcoming webinar. Uh, before you leave, please take a minute to give us feedback on your learning experience on our webinar today. This helps us grow and improve our resources for you. To reach out to the speakers after the webinar, write to info at the rate project uh, the link will be shared in the chat window shortly thank you so much everybody for a wonderful evening uh, project Rangit, we hope we you guys keep on uh, doing the wonderful work that you're doing thank you thank you very much thank you, thank you so much thank you have a good time everyone bye, bye.